Welcome to Wellness Wednesdays with Michelle. I'm your host, Michelle Hart, your number one nutritionist and fat loss specialist. This show is all about how to eat, move, and live to have a fit and healthy life. Today's topic are 10 health myths that keep you sick, tired, and overweight. Okay, so this is part three of a three-part series. And I actually want to go through uh, the first few myths before I get into the last three today. And I just want to share that. The reason why I'm actually out here speaking to you is because I was struggling with my health. I was um, a skinny fat, I was struggling, and I was starving when I was in my teenage years. I wanted to find a way that I could eat and not gain weight. And it took so much sifting through all the BS to finally find the truth. And so that's actually why I'm out here today to share with you what's really healthy and what's really not healthy, okay? So I'm gonna start with uh, the first myth that I spoke about last time, which was gluten is bad for you. Actually, gluten is bad for you only if you have an allergy to gluten, okay? Autoimmune disease, which would be celiac or um, Crohn's disease or any autoimmune. Yes, of course, you, gluten is bad for you. But for everybody else, absolutely not. You can handle a little bit of gluten. That is not the enemy. What's going on is you have leaky gut syndrome. Your gut is leaky and gluten is a larger molecule. So it's just going through your gut into your systemic body and is causing an immune response. And you feel it as all sorts of things. Wherever your weakness is, you're gonna feel it. If you have a weakness in your joints, you're gonna feel it in your joints. If you have a weakness in your brain, you're gonna feel it as brain fog. If you have a weakness in your stomach, you're gonna feel it as a stomach ache, okay? And all this will stop you from losing weight. So that is one of the reasons why you can't lose weight. It's not the gluten, you have leaky gut. So um, the next myth that I want to dispel, that, that I dispelled last time was carbs are bad for you. Uh, yes and no. Yes, carbs are bad for you if you're eating the right, wrong kind of carbs. What are they? Processed carbs. So that means anything from a box or a package that would be considered mainly a processed carb. So basically, and I would have to say flour, unless it was coconut flour, but any kind of like grain flours, those are really hard to digest. And unless you soak and sourdough them first, they are gonna cause havoc. What are the good carbs? Your vegetables are the good carbs. And so a strategy that I use, because what I do is I help a lot of uh, individuals that are over 40 who want to lose 20 plus pounds. That is exactly who I help. I can help everyone, but really that's the area that I'm focusing on right now because there are missing pieces that they're not doing that if you flip the switch and you do the right things, you can start to shred away those 20 plus pounds very easily. And I've done that for thousands of people, so I already know that this works. So anyways, when it gets back to carbs, um, we're, a really good strategy is if you do have weight to lose, what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you um, have the non-starchy fibrous carbs during the day, like the plants that are growing in the garden above the ground, and then at night you can have some below the ground vegetables, like about a half a cup starchy carbs. So are carbs bad for you? No, it's the wrong type of carbs that are. Carbs are actually good for you. They actually support your digestive system because they give you the fiber that you need to eliminate the, um, the extra cholesterol, the extra fat, all the toxins, that's what comes out your stool. So you need to have a regular stool to do that. You need the fiber to have a regular stool. Okay, so let's go to number three. Number three is you gain weight if you drink wine. Yes and no. Yes, if you have a plugged liver. If your liver is, liver is congested, sorry, liver is congested, then um, yes, of course, you're going to really have a challenge um, with your wine because all the toxins from the wine, alcohol gets filtered through the liver. If the liver is already congested, you are going to feel, feel it like, oh my gosh, I can't have wine. Actually, if you had a clean liver, of course you can have some wine. The quality of wine is important. You're going to want to make sure that it's uh, it's free of chemicals, so you want to look for organic or biodynamic, something locally grown, something of high altitude. Those are your better wine sources. I like Summerhill Winery, but there's others as well, like Dry Farms Wines. But anyway, so wine, no, it's not going to make you fat and make you feel crappy if you have a good liver. So I'm going to, so there you go, all right? The next thing is bread. Bread is bad for you. Well, yes and no. So the wrong kind of bread is obviously bad for you. What are they? Flour, especially wheat. We've got to get away from this whole wheat being healthy. Whole wheat is not healthy. Whole wheat is an obesogen, which means it gets you obese. And we know this because Dr. William Davis in his book called 
uh, Wheat Belly, he told you, he dispelled all the science behind it. Wheat today is not something we can consume. Years ago, like the, um, the, the ancestral wheat, so the, the original wheat, which is einkorn, or there's another one. Yeah, sure, we can have that because that's the original form which our bodies have adapted to, not the recent form. The most recent form is the body looks at it like a toxin and then that's how you gain weight and feel crappy. So wheat bread, yes, that is, I would have to say is bad for you, okay? What is good for you is if you had properly prepared sourdough bread, like spelt or buckwheat or kamut, if you have good digestion. If you're looking to lose weight, I wouldn't have that. I'd be looking at coconut bread. So coconut bread is really healthy bread. And that way, if you have coconut bread, you don't feel like you're falling off track because you're just replacing the bad wheat bread with the good coconut bread. And now it's easy to, to shred away those 20 plus pounds. All right. So let's go to the, this is really fun. <laughs> I just love doing this because people are such, they're given the wrong information and I see this all the time. So that's why I'm out there now, all right? Um, all right, so let's see, where are we? Number five. Number five is eating, oh, I love this one. Oh, this is such a good one. Okay, eating often will boost your metabolism. Yes and no. So yeah, a very small amount, but no, because you're always eating all the time. First of all, who wants to be trapped, strapped to the fridge all day and not being productive doing other things. I don't think a lot of people do. Um, so the second thing is you want to have spread your meals apart. Why? Because if you're always eating all the time, you're asking your digestive system to work. Go to work. Okay, hey, break down the food. Break it down. Get rid of what we want. Get rid of what we don't want. Keep what we do. You're stressing this digestive system all day. Best strategy is to eat, stop, eat. So stop for four to five hours. That's if you can stop eating between meals four to five hours, you have a healthy metabolism. If you can't, you don't. <laughs> um, and let and see these the ones that have blood sugar issues are going. I can't go two three hours without eating. That's not healthy because if you were uh, back in the day and that was the case, you would have died. All right, you have to be able to spread your meals apart. That means not even eat for days and still be fine, really, okay? So if that's the case, you've got some uh, blood sugar issues. So you've got to look at things that, you know, I could help with. So send me a message. I'd be happy to help you with that. We've got to spread our meals apart. And when you do, eat properly when you eat so that you can spread your meals apart. That's going to boost the metabolism because you're feeding your body nutrient-rich foods that will then build the body up to be strong, boost the metabolism, and then give your digestive system a break so that you have healthy digestive system, okay? So let's go to number six. Uh, protein is bad for you, uh, especially it's gonna harm your kidneys and it's gonna uh, harm your bones if you have too much, yes and no. Well, too much, like what, all day? Yeah, but really we need protein to support the kidneys. We need protein to support the bones. And my last talk, debunked all that with scientific papers that actually showed that when you eat enough protein, you're supporting the kidneys, all right, and you're supporting the bones. Now, this is coming from someone who had osteoporosis when I was 32, like full-blown, like an 80-year-old grandma, where I had to figure this out, build my bones. I'm over 50. I have the strongest bones ever, and this is all natural with the right diet and exercise. So if anybody's watching this and they have osteoporosis or are concerned about that, Wow, I would love to help you uh, move that in, a, in the right direction to build your bones up without medication, okay? And if you're on medication, don't worry. We can work with that too. Okay, now getting to today's myths, okay? So there are three of them that I'm going to talk about today. So, oh, this is so good. No, so number seven, you shouldn't skip breakfast. Who said? <laughs> uh, your mom? I'm sorry, mom, but that's not true. Uh, maybe she wanted to feed you all the time because she wanted to nurture you. I'm not sure. Um, but doctors and health advocates and blog posts, oh, yeah, don't skip breakfast. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, we often hear. Well, yes and no. Here's the thing. Yes, if you're looking to gain weight and you're a hard gainer, which is when you eat, you can't gain weight. But I'm going to argue that right now because I actually have hard gainers get a hold of me and we can get them to gain weight. But it's not by eating more. It is a little bit. It's fixing the gut. They're not absorbing their foods. We have to look at how your gut function is. If your gut function is not working, you're not actually absorbing your food. So let's move in that direction instead. 
And the second one is, yes, um, breakfast is important if you have blood sugar issues. Yes, of course, we don't want you crashing and then burning and all that, because when you crash, cortisol goes up and you're stressed. And so we don't want that to happen. But again, let's take another step back. Why are you crashing? It's not because you have to eat all the time. It's your blood sugar and you have blood sugar imbalances that we need to fix. And that's primary, primarily the liver and the pancreas. We have to get that working properly so that you can spread your meals apart. So you don't have to have breakfast right away. So you don't, you're not crashing and burning. It's such an easy fix when you know what you're doing. And for those, the ones that know me, I'm the one that's known to find that missing piece to help unblock your body's ability to lose weight. Okay, that's exactly what I do. Because I've been doing this for 20 years. And this is something that um, I love to do and, and what is my strength. So anyone who's struggling with weight, really get a hold of me. I would love to find your missing piece. You don't have to struggle anymore. So anyways, um, you shouldn't skip breakfast. Yes to the hard gainers and yes to the ones with uh, diabetes or blood sugar imbalances, diabetes one, diabetes two, hypoglycemia. Okay. Let's go to no. No, we don't want to have breakfast if you want to lose weight. Okay. Um, and I can talk about a couple studies. So studies um, have been shown in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition in 2014 and also diabetes care in 2015 clearly show that um, studies have been done on lean and overweight individuals have shown that skipping breakfast does not inherently um, it does not inherently affect the metabolic rate. It doesn't slow it down if you skip it. It does not slow it down. In fact, what it does is it'll actually speed it up, and here's why. When you're not eating, you're burning fat. If you're eating all the time, you will not burn fat. You will burn your food. So a good strategy to lose weight is skipping breakfast if you're not hungry. My golden rule to all my clients that come to me to lose weight, and this is, I mean, Josh, he lost 50 pounds, okay, since um, just 10 pounds a month. He lost, he lost 50 pounds. He went from 290 to, he, we were just talking 237. David lost 37 pounds, okay? And it was easy for them because what they're doing is this strategy that you're gonna learn right now. And that is from dinner to breakfast, you want to fast. You want to fast and that means no calories. That means after dinner, you can have things like herbal tea, like chamomile tea would be really good with a bit of stevia because stevia it has no calories and it's an herb and it will balance blood sugar. So that's a really good strategy. Just no food after dinner, wait 14 hours. If you are a, um, a, a female, if you are a male and you're, or you're a female in menopause, you can go 16 hours, dinner to breakfast. That means no calories. That means wait to have breakfast till it's been 16 hours since the time you had dinner. Game changing. This is, this is how my clients do it. This is so simple. Losing weight is very simple if you just follow what you need to do. Okay, that's one of the things that you can do. Um, and also, there was a, a review in 2010 in the uh, Clinical Review of Food Science Nutrition. It's going to be in the show notes, by the way. Mentioned observational studies showed that on average, breakfast skippers have um, their their BMI is compromise that means that they are oh they they tend to be overweight if they um skip breakfast so just have a look at the study i'm not really talking a lot about studies right now i'm actually giving you the polls notes and then in the show notes you can see the studies if you want to dive in what i'm saying is this is actually what works for my clients is they fast from dinner to breakfast either 14 or 16 hours and they don't have breakfast because they're told to have breakfast or it's time to have breakfast the golden rule is they eat when they're hungry and they stop when they're full. That is always the golden rule. When you're hungry, you eat. Whatever time that is, it could be 11, it could be 12, it could be one, it could be two, I don't care. Your body will tell you when it's hungry. So it's connecting the brain to the, um, the body. So brain, body. What, when am I hungry, eat. When am I just full, stop. That's all you have to do. If you can't do that, you are leptin resistant. That is something that needs to be fixed if you want to have any chance at all to lose 20 plus pounds. That is one of the missing pieces that I find time and time again with anyone who's 20 plus pounds overweight, they're leptin resistant, they don't know when they're hungry and full, you will not get that weight off until you fix it. And I actually have a leptin resistance fixing plan, it's 90 days. And so if anyone watching, get a hold of me, like you don't need to struggle, um, we can fix this, okay?
Um, the next thing is we are going to go through the next myth, which is to lose fat, don't eat before breakfast. So, um, sorry, to lose fat, don't eat before exercise. That's so funny, before breakfast. To, to lose fat, don't eat before exercise. So again, yes and no. Yes, um, you, you want to like go into exercise fasted. Why? Because you are burning fat and you're setting the stage up to build more muscle after you um, eat, right? So, but at the same time, if you have blood sugar issues, you don't want to get that crash and try and like m grit yourself uh, exercising when you're starving. Never, ever do that. Why? Because cortisol goes up. Cortisol is a hormone anytime you're stressed. If you're starving, you're stressed. Cortisol goes up. What does that mean? You will immediately start to burn away your muscle tissue, which you don't want to do, and you will immediately stop fat burning because the body's under starvation mode. Don't do that. So what you're going to want to do instead is have something little before you exercise that you can easily digest. The one I recommend is bone broth. So a cup of bone broth made properly with a bit of cayenne and salt. If you have a cup of bone broth before you go exercise, only if you're hungry, it is like it's, it's easy to digest because it's liquid. It's full of minerals. So the body, it supports joints. So if you have joint pain and you want to exercise, have a cup of bone broth before you exercise, it will actually nourish the joints. It'll, it'll provide hyaluronic acid. It will provide the, um, the collagen matrix that supports healthy joints. If you do that consistency, you will notice a difference. I, I've discovered this when I read um, a book that was called Deep Nutrition by Kate Shanahan, and she used this strategy for all the LA Laker basketball players. And what she did is she added bone broth into their diets before they did their, uh, their games. And they noticed a remarkable improvement in their health and also their recovery. And what they found was because the bone broth is like a custom meal to the joints because of the minerals and the, uh, the L-glycine, actually, it's really high in L-glycine. It's an amino acid to help with joints um, structure. So after I read that, I'm like, I'm going to try that. Plus, it's really good for facelift. It's a natural facelift. So and when you get, get over 40 or 50, uh, you kind of want to pay attention to those things. So anyway, so that's what I do. Um, I have a cup of bone broth every day, and I typically have it before I exercise. All right. So um, but, you know, if you're not hungry before you exercise, don't eat. You don't have to be fasted before you exercise. All right. Um, so it depends, like, where you're at with that. So if you're hungry, have the bone broth. If you're not hungry, then go into your exercise fasted. That's all you need to do. So that does apply for that because you're going to burn fat. And then after your exercise, then you'll be looking at eating when you're hungry. Okay. Um, so let's talk about myth number nine. So here's the thing. This is my last myth. All right. So you need to have protein right after you work out. Um, really? Yes and no. So yes, if you plan on doing a hard workout the next day. Why? Because you want to replenish the glycogen reserves in your liver and your muscles quickly with a meal after so that you have the energy for the next day. That's actually the reason. Now, glycogen, if you want to know what that is, if you're not sure, it's actually um, stored sugar and it's in your liver and your muscles. And what it is, is you have these like little, I call them um, uh, suitcases. And in your liver and your muscles, they have like these suitcases where the sugar goes in. It doesn't go in your fat. It actually goes into these little suitcases and it fills, the sugar fills up as you eat it and it's, it's, it saves it as glycogen. So this is stored sugar called glycogen. And what happens is when you're not eating, this is what it uses. It uses a little bit of the sugar to get you through to the next meal. So you want to make sure you have big suitcases so you can um, um, separate your meals farther apart. So again, for what we talked about before. Um, so anyway, so if you have, if you exercise regularly, like every day, really hard, you actually want to keep that full. If not, you want to train the body to deplete it so that they actually get bigger and you can add more sugar and not gain weight. That's really the truth. And so what you want to do then is, so no, you don't need to have a meal right after you exercise. All right. Your best strategy, which I've been doing since I learned this, um, maybe six, eight months ago, which is you want to wait after your exercise 30 minutes to an hour. Okay. Wait till you're hungry. Always my golden rule. But then what you're doing is while you're waiting, 
you're upregulating. You've got this boost of growth hormone and testosterone by not eating. If you eat right away, you've blunted the growth hormone and the testosterone burst. We want growth hormone. Get, growth hormone is our anti-aging hormone. It keeps us from looking old and crinkly and it keeps us from feeling old and crinkly, okay? Testosterone is really good for libido, good for bone health, good for muscle growth, and good for get up and go, I wanna go and take on the day, all right? You can enhance these, um, these surges by waiting to eat uh, about 30 minutes to an hour, okay? So that's what you wanna do. And the, the other reason is because of this. When you eat, you inflame. The body upregulates white blood cells, okay? So it does that because it wants to put away the food and use nutrition and get rid of the waste products. It naturally does it. You have an inflammatory response, okay? You also have an inflammatory response when you exercise. So if you exercise and you eat right after, you're double inflaming. We don't wanna do that. That is the cause of all chronic illness. That is the cause of metabolic imbalance. That is the cause if you're 20 or more, 20 or more pounds overweight, it's because you're always inflaming. We have to put the fire out. So what we're gonna do is we're going to exercise. And then a really good strategy that I learned um, from Dr. Jack Cruz was, after, he's a neurosurgeon, he talks a lot about leptin resistance, and I learned a lot of this from him and some others. But anyways, after you exercise, what you wanna do, I know it's gonna sound kind of woo-woo crazy, but actually it does work and there's science behind it. I know it's cold out too, so listen to this. You're gonna walk outside and take your shoes off and put your feet on the earth. Yeah, you are. Because you know what's gonna happen is after you exercise, you're hot already, so you're not gonna like freeze. But also, what you're doing is you are getting, yeah, so you're getting electrons entering the body from the earth. They come from Mother Earth. Electrons come into the body. And what they do is they put away the inflammation. And the other thing you're doing is getting photons from the sun or whatever sunlight's out there. So you're like a battery. You're like a battery, plus, minus. You're the battery, especially when you're hydrated. And then what happens is you're going to notice an increase in energy. You're going to notice a decrease in pain. If you're just outside grounding, they call it, for five or 10 minutes, that's all you need to do. You know what? Just try it. If it feels right for you, only if it feels right. You know, I'm just throwing some information at you. Give it a try. You don't know until you try. There's no side effects to any of this, which is what I'm about. Um, this is real health. This is real nutrition. This is real life. This is real simple, all right? So then you want to, again, wait 30 minutes, an hour. Then when you're hungry only, then you want to have your, your meal. And I, I actually want to just finish off with my three ingredient smoothie. Listen, whoever hasn't heard of this has to hear about this because it's for busy people, probably like you, who want something nutritious that can burn fat, build muscle, and give you energy. So it's only three ingredients. And if you can have one of these meals a day, any time of day, when you're hungry, right? When you're hungry, not when you're not hungry. Um, all it is is there's two versions of it. The first one is if you are going dairy-free, you want to have some coconut milk, about half a cup. I like this brand. It's really creamy. You want to add in a little bit of liquid. You can do water, but this um, almond breeze tastes better. Um, that's the French version. <laughs> Here's the English version. So yeah, unsweetened almond milk. So just have enough till it, it's good consistency. And what you want to do is add in your favorite protein powder. And so if you're dairy free, you're going to want to do like a really plant-based protein powder that's high grade without sugar. It needs to be um, something, no artificial sweetener for sure, but make sure it's stevia or a really good sweetener um, that is healthy. And then um, you're going to, so you've got your coconut milk and you have your protein powder, you mix it up and then just add some extra fat. I like crunchy stuff, so pumpkin seeds are really good, about a tablespoon of this. Um, really good for zinc, so if you need to improve your immune system, if you're a male, it's really good for the prostate. Um, and it's really good for hair, skin and nails, really good for the time of season to avoid viruses that are floating around starting with the C word. Um, the other thing you can do is instead of the crunchy, um, I like crunchy stuff in mind, but you can just add flaxseed oil, especially if you have constipation, because flaxseed oil will allow for healthy bowel movement. It will support healthy bowels. And what does that do? It gets rid of toxins and it makes you have a flat stomach. You're gonna feel cleaner and leaner, okay? So that's the first version. Second version is if you do have dairy, always look for uh, eight, let's see, is this English? Yeah, so this is the, this is a version of a yogurt that is made from A2 cows that is non-homogenized. This is the kind of yogurt I want you to look for, not the other stuff. Why? Because A2 cows are compatible to our bodies. A1 cows are not. So Jersey land cows are A2 cows. So then you're not inflaming and you're enhancing your health. 
The other thing is look for non-homogenized yogurt. Don't have homogenized. Homogenized is going to break up the cholesterol. It's going to oxidize the cholesterol. It's going to cause cardiovascular damage. We don't want that. We want to keep our cholesterol intact. So that's why we want non-homogenized yogurt if you are having dairy. And then, of course, you want to add in your protein powder. So for me, what I do for my clients is, again, I love this Pure brand. The Pure brand is a professional brand. It's the one that I use for my clients. I use two other brands. Pure is one of them. So anyways, this is a pure whey product. Um, it's really super clean, sweetened with stevia. It tastes really good. It's vanilla. And what you do is you want to get enough protein in there um, so that you're feeding your body properly. And that's about 0.6 to 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. That's how much you need in a day. All right. Um, and then again, just add your crunchy, whatever you want with that. All right. I laid a lot of information off to you today. And, you know, my goal is just to put you in the right track because I see people going on the wrong track and they're being sold the wrong information. It's not about your health. It's about their pocketbook. And I'm just really not okay with that. So that's why I'm out there speaking more. So please share this with others um, because there's so much confusion out there. They're frustrated. It's really easy when you know what you're doing and there's no point in struggling any longer. I've been doing this over 20 years. I've helped thousands and thousands of people only because I really don't like to see people sold the wrong information. All right. What I've shared with you today, just give it a try. There's no side effects. This is not like a drug. This is real health. And you're going to know when you try to see how you feel. Mind to body. See how it feels. And listen, if anyone here needs any help by pulling together a done-for-you plan, would I ever love to do that? I would love to find your missing piece to lose 20-plus pound, missing piece to get your health back, especially with blood sugar imbalances and digestive issues and metabolic. Those are like my, my major strengths. So listen, I am here for you. Just ask Michelle. Again, please share this with others. Please send me a comment. Do you like it, not like it? What do you want me to talk about next? Um, in my upcoming shows, I'm always speaking uh, Wednesday uh, between 3.30 3, 3 and 4, Wellness Wednesday with Michelle. Remember, number one nutritionist and fat loss specialist. Thank you so much for joining, and I will see you next week. And make sure you send me a comment or a message um, if you need any help.